I guess in this edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham is the medical part of the Cincinnati Bengals. We're brought to you by First Star Logistics, and our guest Nick Cosgray is the director of rehabilitation for the Cincinnati Bengals. A lot of injuries. Players sustain injuries on a weekly basis, almost on a daily basis when you consider practice. And Nick Cosgray is part of the group medically that puts it all back together again in form of rehabilitation, physical therapy with the players. It takes a whole family, not just an individual, to get a player back to playing form. And everybody that has worked with Nick Cosgray over the years has nothing but glowing remarks and, and heavy sentiment of gratitude about what Nick Cosgray has done to help them extend and prolong their careers. So we're going to hear how he does it. You're going to like what you hear from Nick Cosgray. Welcome to our beautiful studios at First Star Logistics. It's In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And our very special guest today, Director of Rehabilitation for the Cincinnati Bengals, Mr. Nick Cosgray. And uh, welcome to the conversation, sir. I appreciate you having me on. So, Director of Rehabilitation. What uh, does that involve? I'm sure it involves a myriad of things, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> you you fill a lot of roles to a lot of different people, don't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, my primary job title, I'm a physical therapist, athletic trainer. So um, really my role here is to be in charge of any, you know, injury that takes place in the, the um, evaluation, the rehab and return to play for pretty much anybody that, suffers an injury here. So there's a team of us here, you know, myself and, um, you know, multiple athletic trainers on staff and, you know, everybody has a role in the, you know, treatment and rehab of players. And kind of my role is to direct those rehabs and um, get people going on the right uh, physical therapy program to, to get them back to play. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's real interesting in talking to players that have worked with you some some kind of talk about you as almost like a brother <laughs> some talk to you as like a sports psychologist i mean you 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 fill a lot of different roles for these guys cuz the rehab is a grind i mean both physical and mental grind for the players and for you i'm sure right oh yeah yeah i mean it's a, it's tough you know you you have a guy that you know they're what they've been doing since they were you know some five years old, some, you know, 10 years old that has been playing football and that's what they have known and that's what they've always done. And, and you get a significant injury that, you know, kind of takes that away from you for a little bit. It's, um, it can be mentally draining for, for these guys. And, you know, the, the rehab process itself is, is a long, you know, drawn out process, especially in, in the NFL or even any pro sport is you're being seen every day with you know really no days off if you're if you're the you know general population in the clinic you may go to the clinic once or twice a week and see somebody and, and here in the nfl you're being seen you know multiple times a day you know every day seven days a week so you know it can be a physical grind but the mental grind is 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 tough on them too so you know yeah we we spend a lot of time everybody here spends a lot of time the the entire medical staff of of you know one being somebody for the players to listen to, you know, or we listen, you know, we can listen to them. They can tell us what they're, what they're feeling, you know, and, and we're around them more than probably anybody else is. So we're there right. to help them as much as we can. Yeah. I mean, they're around you more than they're around their family members, right? I mean, you spend more time with these guys than you probably spend with your family and they spend with theirs. Trust me, my wife and, and kids let me know that, especially during camp. <laughs> I bet. I bet. So the, the dreaded setback, you know, I mean, sometimes they're, they're unavoidable, mm -hmm. um, but it se seems like quite a few of these rehabilitations have gone extremely smoothly. I mean, if setbacks, there are very minimal at, uh, at, in the worst case scenario, can you avoid setbacks? Or I mean, is, is it just inevitable that, you know, it's the luck of the draw or how, how does that work? No, I think, I think that, that setbacks can be avoided as long as you are, are, you know, 
doing things the right way and not trying to, you know, you're not trying to push you fast. You know, you're not trying to hold back too much. You're, you're really just trying to, to progress these guys based on how their body is responding to what you're doing with them. You know, if you, if you just evaluate and, and assess these guys on a daily basis and through their rehab program, you can, you can, you know, challenge them in a way that where you know that their body is responding the right way so you know hey on this day we can push a little bit harder or on this day hey what we did yesterday may have flared them up a little bit let's back off i think that where people run into problems is if you try to push through some of these these times when guys are are complaining of a little bit of soreness or complaining you know hey that just didn't feel right but you try to push through some of that um knowing that you know, you could push them back a little bit. So you really have to have to listen to what the player is telling you. Um, and then you have to be able to assess what you're treating um, to know, yes, this guy is ready to to progress to the next level. Or we need to pull the reins back and slow down a little bit because maybe what we did was, was too much. So I think, you know, here, you know, just in the past, uh, we've, we've been able to put together pretty good programs um, for these guys to where – you know, I think we've been able to avoid some of the, the setbacks that you can see. You know, it's interesting because I, in talking with guys that have gone through the rehabilitation process with you, they, they say that that's where your magic is because you have that um, that sense or awareness of or the intangible, I guess, of, of evaluating, okay, these guys, they're professional athletes for a reason. They're very competitive. They're very driven. So, you know, their worst enemy can be themselves sometimes. And they're like, Nick's got a great feel for one to pull me back, one to say, okay, go run a little bit. You know, let's, let's let some rope out here. That, that, does that just come with experience or have you always had that knack and that feel? Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, it definitely comes with experience. I remember early on in my career, you know, I think there were times where, you know, I probably pushed people a little bit too soon. Um, you know, and didn't have that sense of it. So I think a lot of it comes with experience and a lot of it comes with, you know, just having a, a good medical staff around you and, and you have multiple eyes looking at things all the time. So from our physicians to our other athletic trainers on staff, you have multiple people looking and evaluating these these injuries to be able to give you a sense like, hey, you know, you may hear it from somebody, hey, Nick, I noticed this while the guy was was doing this exercise, something that I didn't necessarily see. So you have all these different eyes looking at it that I think helps. And, you know, doing physical therapy, and I tell all of our student interns that come through here and, and, and everything else, and, and doing rehab, there is as much of an art to it as there is a science. You know, there is, you, you obviously have to follow the physiological effects of healing, um, but then there is a little bit of a, of an art to how to progress, you know, and know when to pull back. And, you know, just because things aren't the way you learned them in school, you know, you can kind of push the issues here a little bit, or you need to pull back on certain ways. So, you know, I think there is a little bit of art that comes with it. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's all experience or if I'm blessed in a certain way to have that, that skill yeah. set. So, um, yeah. but I think there's a lot of factors that go into it. Yeah, because when you you hear the old axiom, and I believe it, I think it's 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 pretty true. Is that you know every injury is different, every surgery is different, yeah, every sure. rehabilitation, you know, is different. But I'm sure over time, you know, you you can put things into categories like, yeah, this is close to what I experienced with this injury that this player had X number of years ago or whatever. So you you have a bigger reference point as years go by, I guess, to draw upon. But every one is unique in itself, isn't it? Absolutely. Every, everyone's different because, you know, what the, what the general public doesn't get privy to is all the details of what goes into some of these injuries. So, you know, what you, what the public gets to read is that, oh, so-and-so had an ACL tear or so-and-so had a meniscus tear or so-and-so has an ankle sprain, but you don't know all the details that go into that. Right. And, and that's, that's, nobody should know that. Um, but that's what makes each injury a little bit different. Um, you know, some guy may have just an isolated ACL tear. Another person may have an ACL tear with a, you know, meniscus tear. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that can go on with each injury and that dictates the way the surgery is done. And then that also dictates the way that the, the rehab will be ran. 
Um, so again, whenever you read, oh, so-and-so had an ACL tear and so-and-so had an ACL tear, those could be two completely different things. One could have started out weight bearing right away after surgery. The other one may, they say, okay, he needs to be non-weight bearing for four weeks It all. You know, nobody, nobody outside of the medical people would know that. So you really can't, when you read them about them in the paper or on TV, you know, you can't, you can't compare the two. So they are all different. Yeah. And, and let's talk about the two uh, most recent ones that you've been working with, you know, Joe Burrow ACL, but there was some extenuating uh, damage MCL and uh, Trey's maybe was a little bit not cleaner as such with the ACL, not as severe um, uh, extenuating damage or uh, damage around that injury. Uh, but both in both of those cases, it seems like their rehab was very, very prompt. I mean, you know, it's like, boy, they're, they're back. They're back, back pronto. They're back right away. Were both of those guys unbelievable rehab patients to work with? Yeah. Both of those guys were, you know, what you want out of a patient, both of them, you know, it, you know, it kind of goes back. And I think, I think, you know, Trey was one that, that had said this to, to the media is that, you know, we, we try to tell everyone after a significant injury where they know, okay, hey, this is a season ender. I'm going to have to have surgery. I'm going to have to have something reconstructed. As, as we tell them, hey, take three days. You get three days to, you know, kind of think about it. You can be mad. You can grieve. You can do whatever you need to do for three days. After that three-day period, hey, it's time to get get rocking and roll and start the rehab process, start trending towards getting better. And that is something that I picked up a long time ago when I, you know, before I started here and worked in the clinic is, is, you know, give them a few days, but, but set a time limit on that grieving period, right? Set a time limit to say, Hey, okay, now it's time to, to get serious. We got to get this thing fixed. And then we're going to start the rehab process and then we're going to go. And, and to be honest, both Joe and Trey, they, they both tackled that head on with with no reservations and, and you know it's it's great when it's you have two professionals that this is what they love to do and they put everything they have into the rehab process it definitely makes it makes it easier for sure at first our logistics we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah, know, you know, you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com. What was it like when uh, when Zach Taylor told you that you were going to be a captain and going out to midfield? Uh, before the Miami Dolphins game for the coin toss, and you were going out there with with Joe Burrow and Trey Hopkins, two guys that you uh, worked so closely with during the off season, the rehabilitation process. What what was that like for you when you found that out? Uh, humbling, really. I mean, it was a uh, it it was a great honor, such a surprise. I had no no clue that Zach was going to do something like that. But but honestly, I think it's a testament to our entire you know, medical staff in general. I mean, I may have been the one that, that went out to midfield, but I, you know, that is a testament to our entire staff, starting from our, our doctors who, you know, one did the surgery here and, you know, one of the other players has surgery elsewhere, but, you know, it starts there with the, the team physicians and our head athletic trainer and all the assistant athletic trainers here is everybody works together and, you know, we're all one big team and, you know, yeah, I was the one that walked out to the middle, but there's a lot of other people involved in this whole process. But, but no, it was definitely a, an amazing feeling, you know, to, to be recognized. It's not something that, that we, as, you know, physical therapists, athletic trainers ever ask for, we don't look for, it's not, you know, we don't go out of our way seeking attention and having people look at us and, you know, those kind of things. We are the people that work behind the scenes and, and to have somebody recognize your work um, and acknowledge you for, for doing a good job or being good at your job. Um, it's definitely a, a humbling, but rewarding experience. So it was, it was neat to be able to go out there with those two guys. You have to feel a, 
a, an immense sense of accomplishment along with the players when you know they go out there in the first series against the Miami Dolphins Trey Hopkins is snapping the ball to Joe Burrow your two rehab uh, patients as such and and uh, everything that went into getting them to that point and then they're out there doing that and then they're going to play in the opener on uh, September 12th against the the Minnesota Vikings but it's not like their rehab process is over right I mean you're you're still in the final stages and and that could be for a while in terms of keeping them right physically it's not over at this point in time correct no there's a there's a lot of work that still goes into it you know um it's not the the daily grind that it was during the the you know the thick of the rehab process but you know there's a lot of stuff that goes into it now as far as communicating with our strength and conditioning staff of saying okay hey you know so many times a week these guys need to be in and they need to be doing certain things to maintain their strength um a lot of the you know a lot of the guys as they're coming back they come back into the training room hey we just need to, to work on this so it's it's not as much of a daily you know grind them to the ground trying to get a strong you know or trying to get stronger and build that strength and get the motion back that stuff's all there now it's more of a maintenance and a communication with like i said the strength and conditioning staff and then also the coaching staff of hey you know yes these guys are back they've been cleared to play they're physically ready to go and they can do everything but we still need to, to keep an eye on them and you know there may be a day or two where we have to pull the reins back and say hey you know, in the best interest of the, the player and the, and the team going forward, we may need to give a guy a day or, you know, um, those kind of things or say, hey, let's only have him do portions of practice today just to give him a little bit of a break and so on and so forth. So it's a there's a there's a lot more that goes into it, um, more from the managerial side of things once you get, you know, back out onto the field versus the, the daily grind of, you know, true therapy. Over the years, I'm sure you've seen some uh, some gruesome, you know, unbelievable <laughs> injuries. I mean, these are big bodies uh, that can move at a high rate of speed in some cases, and a lot of uh, you know, a lot of velocity, a lot of inertia, a lot of all kinds of physical physical forces. And it's like, man, sometimes the injuries are like, ah, you get that in a car wreck, you know? I mean, how did how do you get an injury like that on a on a football field? And dislocations are just, you know, I've had unfortunately. Yeah. To dislocations that can be kind of kind of ugly to deal with and everything is that what 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 injuries come to mind you know that that you've been a part of to say wow how did that happen oh I, there's too many to think about i mean you've seen you know you've been around and you've played the game you know it's like a car accident on every play of the game right. <laughs> I right. mean, you've, you've been down the sidelines and and you hear some of the the contacts and you're like how, how are these guys getting back up after that? It's, it's amazing to me, but I mean, we've had, you know, elbow dislocations. We've had, you know, open fractures of the legs. We've had, you know, ankle dislocations come to mind. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you just look at and say, how, how on earth are, are we going <laughs> to be able to help this guy? But, you know, it, over time, you know, with, you know, obviously proper care from our surgeons and then, you know, just, you know, good rehab and, and, and good patient involvement. And these guys are, are doing well. So, you know, um, really no specifics that come to mind, but definitely a lot of different injuries over the years for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, the dislocations, I, I dislocated my foot from my ankle, you know, and my, yeah. my, the sole of my foot's facing me and my ankle bone sticking out in the bottom. And I'm like, yeah, you know, and you <laughs> don't even realize how bad it is, you know, until you look at it and then it's kind of like, eh. yeah. so had to have a spinal, you know, they froze me from my neck down and basically took my foot off my leg, you know, and put it back in and casted it up. It's like, whoa. And then I dislocated my elbow. A big Mike McCoy fell on my arm and my arm went the wrong way. And so my arms like bent the wrong way. The, the trainer and doctor come out and they're like, what is it? I rolled over like a dislocation. So I grabbed my thumb and pinky, boom, snapped that thing and it went back into place. Fortunately, it wasn't ridiculous but then they just taped that bad boy up and back out in the game you know <laughs> yeah. taped up in about a 60 degree angle it was uh it's crazy amazing. it's amazing how the body works <laughs> i'm telling you it really is it's it's crazy so all the all the uh young people out there that are listening and saying boy and watching and, and saying nick cosgrave how how do you what do you have to do from an education standpoint to do what nick cosgrave is doing i i might have an interest in doing that yeah. what what does it take so 
I did four years of undergrad um, and got my undergrad degree in athletic training. Um, and during that time, you know, I was at the University of Indianapolis. Uh, I sent a resume to all 32 teams after my junior year of, of school, uh, looking for a summer internship. Um, was lucky enough to catch on and, and get a summer internship with the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, so I did a summer internship, did training camp for them as a student intern. Um, and then, you know, did a, did a good job, I guess, because they, they offered me to stay on during the season that year. And I would go back and forth between um, school and the, the Colts facility and, and mm-hmm. help out as much as I could. Well, during that time, I, you know, I had already been applying to PT school because that's always something that, that from the time I was in high school, I knew I wanted to, to be a physical therapist. Um, never really knew that I wanted to do it in the NFL until I did you know, the Colts internship as an athletic trainer. Well, I got into PT school, you know, at the University of Indianapolis again, finished that degree in two years. So I have my master's degree in physical therapy. And then after that, I I stayed on, stayed around Indianapolis and took a job with the sports medicine clinic there um, that, you know, provided the doctor coverage for the Indianapolis Colts. So, you know, I was still able to go out and work training camps, those kind of things for the Colts and then got the job here in 2006. So, um, you know, I would say for a young kid, if you're interested in, in it, athletic training is a, is a good place to start. Um, and then if, you know, you want to be a physical therapist, you, you obviously have to go to PT school, which is now a doctorate program at most places. Um, and then, you know, I would just say if you're, if you're interested, hook up with with some sports medicine people around your area you know your the most high schools nowadays have an athletic trainer um, at the school spend time with them you know it's obviously a challenge during you know the COVID time to try to get shadowing opportunities with certain places especially in the nfl there's as you know dave there's so many restrictions as right we can let in and, and everything else so you know i would say your your local sports medicine clinic is is a great place to get in and and shadow and and see what a physical therapist and what an athletic trainer does um in those settings and and everything is similar just the people you're working with are different has to be a rewarding uh, occupation. You know, it's, it's a lot of players, when they get hurt, Trey Hopkins, we were just talking with him about it, um, about his injury. And it, the first thing that goes through your mind is, is that it? Am I done? You know, what am I, what, what am I looking at here? What am I, what am I potentially talking about? And like you said, when you get over the pity party part of it, you know, and you start to start to work your way back, it has to be a rewarding, not only for you, for the player, obviously, but for you as well, to help that player sustain a career, you know, and, uh, and, and go back and be able to play. And that's huge value to an organization. You're talking big bucks. I mean, you know, Joe Burrow is a, is a valuable asset to your organization and, uh, to, to be part of having Joe Burrow back and, and being able to go, um, at it 100%. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, of rewarding, uh, aspects to that, uh, to that occupation that you're part of. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a very rewarding personally, you know, from my standpoint, I mean, that's, that's why I do what I do is I, I enjoy helping people. Right. And, and I just happen to be able to do it at the, at the highest level of football and, and do it in professional football. And this is their career. So you're really helping people prolong their careers. And, and, you know, and I think that, that we as a medical staff are, are here to help our organization as much as we can. And, and by getting the athletes healthy and back on the field as quickly and safely as possible, I feel like we are, are helping the organization, um, you know, and, and obviously the ultimate goal of every organization is to win football games and, the people that help you win the football games are the, the players. <laughs> so yeah. if we can get them back and, and, and have them back as close to a hundred percent as possible, I think that, that we're doing our job. Well, appreciate your, your time and uh, the job that you've done for the Cincinnati Bengals for sure. And it was a, it was a, a well-deserved honor for you to walk out there at midfield and be part of the coin toss and the Miami Dolphins, the final preseason game. And, and I know uh, every player that has ever gone through the rehabilitation process with you has nothing but glowing 
reports and remarks uh, about what you do and how you do it. And uh, not only as a physical therapist, but as a, as a human being and as a person as well. So appreciate everything you do for the, uh, the organization. And I know all the players and coaches and owners and everybody involved with the organization do as well, Nick, and we appreciate your time, man. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate the kind words and, and thanks for having me on. Hi, Dave Lapham here. Have you heard about In the Trenches with Dave Lapham presented by First Star Logistics? Catch new episodes from the world of sports and broadcasting. Search for In the Trenches with Dave Lapham on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts.